pick up a book and read Open up the cover and read Read all the words inside Read Travel to a place and read Open up your mind and read Read, read, everyone read Read Pick up a book and read Open up the cover and read Read all the words inside Read Travel to a place and read Open up your mind and read Read, read, everyone read Okay, this time you have to say read Here we go Read Pick up a book and read Open up the cover and read Read all the words inside Read Travel to a place and read Open up your mind and read Read, read, everyone read Read, 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 everyone read Bergeron, and I'm a St. Timothy Parish Public Schools kindergarten teacher. Today, I wanted to share with you guys a nonfiction book. Do you remember what nonfiction means? That's right. It means the book is going to teach us lots of facts about a certain topic. Today's book is called The Icky Bug Alphabet Book. It was written by Jerry Pelota. He's the author. Do you remember what the author of a book does? That's right, the author writes all of the words in the book. The illustrator of the book is Ralph Mazziello. Do you remember what an illustrator does? That's right, he's so important because he draws the beautiful pictures in the books that we read. Let's get reading. Today, when our book is finished, I want you to think about one bug that you thought was really interesting from today's book. The Icky Bug Alphabet Book. A. A is for alphabet book. A is also for ant. Ants are very hard workers. Ants are able to carry things that are larger and heavier than they are. They always seem to be trying to build something. B. B is for bumblebee. Because the bumblebee is furry, it is able to stay outside in cooler weather than other types of bees. Bumblebees fly from flower to flower collecting nectar to make honey. C. C is for cricket. The cricket likes to hide under things. It makes noise by rubbing its wings together. Isn't it fun to listen to lots of crickets at night? D. D is for dragonfly. The dragonfly has four wings. When dragonflies stop flying, and take a rest, they are unable to fold their wings back. E. E is for earwig. No one seems to know what the earwig got its name. It does not crawl into people's ears. It has a pincher at the tail end of its body. F. F is for firefly. Fireflies shine like light bulbs in the dark. When they light up, they can find each other more easily. Fireflies are easy to catch because they fly so slowly. G. G is for grasshopper. Grasshoppers can jump really well. If you try to catch one, it will usually jump away 
just as you are about to touch it. H. H is for horsefly. The green-headed horsefly has pretty eyes, but it has a terrible bite. If one of them lands on you, be careful, yikes! Push it away. I, I is for the IO moth. The IO moth has two spots on its lower wings that look like eyes. When birds go near these moths, they see the spots, they become startled and fly away. J, J is for Japanese beetle. These beetles love to eat flowers. Sometimes they eat so much that they cause lots of damage to plants. K. K is for katydid. Katydids, like crickets, make noise by rubbing their wings together. The noise they make sounds like their name. Katydid, katydid, katydid. Sometimes they say katydidn't. L is for ladybug. This insect is really called a ladybird beetle. They are so round, it is hard to believe that they can fly, but they can. M, M is for monarch. The monarch butterfly is known for migrating. It flies from the Northern United States all the way to Mexico. Birds know that monarchs taste awful, so they never go near them. N. N is for noceums. Noceums is a word for tiny insects that are almost impossible to see. They are flies that are really called midges. They can make people miserable because they bite. O. O is for orb weaver. Spiders that make round orb-shaped webs are called orb weavers. Many people are frightened by spiders, but most of them will not hurt you. P. P is for praying mantis. It is called a praying mantis because it looks like it is kneeling and praying. Gardeners and farmers like them because they eat pesty bugs that are harmful to vegetables and other plants. Q. Q is for queen bee. In the beehive, there's only one queen bee. She can lay thousands of eggs per day. All of the other bees in the hive take good care of the queen bee. R. R is for red admiral. This butterfly is not bright red like an apple or a cherry. It's a rusty orange color. Red admirals are very difficult to catch because they fly fast and erratically. S. S is for scorpion. Scorpions are really scary looking. They have two front pinchers, just like lobsters. At the end of their tails, they have stingers. Would you like to be stung by a scorpion? I sure wouldn't. T. T is for tarantula. The tarantula is a big furry spider. It can grow to be as large as your hand. Tarantulas and scorpions fa are found in warm climates. U. U is for unfinished painting. On this page, the illustrator forgot to finish painting the picture. U. U is for unicorn beetle. Okay, that's better. Now the illustrator has finished the painting. The unicorn beetle has a single horn sticking out of its head. V. V is for velvet mite. These creatures are red and so small you can hardly see them. About 30 of them 
could fit on the fingernail of your thumb. W. W is for water spider. This spider makes its home underwater. It weaves a special web which allows it to bring air under the water. It catches and eats things that swim or float nearby. X. X is for, is for the marking on the back of this bug. We could not find a bug whose name began with the letter X. This bug is called a cotton stainer. Y. Y is for yellow plant bug. This bug is very easy to see because it is a bright color. It has six legs, just like all other insects. Z. Z is for zillions of zebra butterflies. Zillions of them flying all at once would be a beautiful sight to see. Now that we have gone through the alphabet, on this page are some wicked, icky bugs. Friends, I hope you enjoyed our nonfiction book today. Now, think about which icky bug was your favorite. Now, ask a grown-up if you can go look up three new facts about your favorite bug. See you guys later. Since 1985, alligator ranching has been a part of Louisiana's diverse culture. In fact, Louisiana has set the standards for alligator ranching across the globe. In 1965, the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries decided to make it illegal to kill alligators because they saw that the population was declining dramatically. What happened was the population didn't really increase very much because the honest people quit killing the alligators but the poachers started killing the alligators because they were allowed to go into a new industry with no competition. By 1985, they concluded that the thing that needed to be done was take the alligator eggs out of the marsh. So Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries created the program that exists today, and that program is that the ranchers go out into the marsh to harvest the eggs. The end result is we're harvesting about 350 to 400,000 eggs a year and that is allowing us to raise those alligators to a size of approximately four feet, at which time we release alligators to the marsh. Every alligator that's ever harvested has to have a tag on its skin. The Wildlife and Fisheries charges $4 for that tag, and that is where they get their funding to run this amazing program of protection. A lot of work goes into alligator ranching. One of the most important parts of it is gathering and hatching the eggs. Leave mom alligator alone with her eggs only six to eight out of a hundred eggs will hatch and grow to become a four-foot alligator. We go out in the marsh and we take the eggs from mama alligator. When we take those eggs, we usually take them all. Collecting eggs can get pretty dangerous. I have one about nine foot long, in fact. Uh, I estimate around nine foot. She's a big gator. And um, I broke about every stick I had, everything in the boat, over her head. She wouldn't back down. Uh, she got about halfway in the boat with me ended up smacking her right on the tip of her nose with my hat, and my hat saved my life that day, more or less. We have all been faced with this country's economic problems, but alligator ranchers have been hit especially hard. It's very difficult to sell an alligator skin right now. Those who buy the alligator skins to ultimately have them made into products, they aren't buying right now. The tanners are reducing their, their, their production. The ranchers don't really have the opportunity to reduce what they have. They can reduce their harvest of new eggs, they can slow the input of new product into the market, but we have a two-year supply of alligator on ranches growing right now that has nowhere to go. I think over the next six months to a year, something's gonna give, and hopefully it's to the benefit of all. Alligator ranching is an exciting business. 
But there's more to it for the ranchers. It's about their love of wildlife. It's a pretty rewarding job. And uh, I don't know, I just got an extreme passion for Louisiana and for the, for the South in general and, uh, and for conservation. I've uh, been dealing with reptiles and animals for about 15 years now. And um, I love it. Don't wake the wiggle worms. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka crash boom bam. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka crash boom bam. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms wake. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms shake. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms climb. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms slime. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka crash boom bam. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka crash boom bam. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms dance. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms prance. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms, giggle. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle. Boom shaka laka laka, boom shaka laka laka, boom shaka laka laka, crash boom bang. Boom shaka laka laka, boom shaka laka laka, boom shaka laka laka, crash boom bang. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms hop. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, wiggle worms stop. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, do not make a peep. Wiggle worms, wiggle worms, fall fast asleep. Shh. Don't wake the wiggle worms. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka crash boom bam. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka. Hey guys, it's Laura Prisco here with St. Tammany Parish Schools. Today I want to talk about how some notes are long and some are short, and that's how we can tell how long to hold that particular note in music. So if you look at these two pencils here, this Pokemon pencil is about twice as long as this other short pencil. So we could fit two short ones where one of these long ones fit. Well, the notes that we're gonna look at today are the same. Here's a couple of rhythms I want you to learn. The first one we call pepperoni pizza, and it's two short, two more short, and then two long notes. So it would go short, 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 long, long. Pepperoni pizza. The next one is long, long, short, short, long. And I would say, I love music class. Our next rhythm I think you'll recognize goes jingle bells, jingle bells. So it's short, short, long, short, short, long. And our final rhythm for today, it's a little phrase from the Incredibles movie. It goes, where is my super suit? Long, short, 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 long. I'm going to use those rhythms to play a little game. This game is similar to Simon Says. When I play a rhythm, you copy that rhythm. You can just clap along. But if I play the forbidden rhythm, which is pepperoni pizza, 
don't play the rhythm that I'm playing. Here we go. Oh, that was pepperoni pizza. Hopefully you didn't play it. Let's try it again. Up, uh, that was pepperoni pizza. That was a forbidden rhythm. Hopefully you didn't play it. Good job, guys. All right, one more thing I wanna to do today is I wanna sing a song. And this song, I'm gonna ask you to do something until the music stops. And I'm gonna say the word stop so you'll know to stop. So stand up and for example, the first verse goes, So you'll stop when I say stop and you'll do whatever I say. Here we go and please sing along. Well, you walk in, you walk in, you walk in, you stop. And you walk in, you walk in, you walk in, you stop. Can you patch your knees, patch your knees, patch your knees and stop? Patch your knees, patch your knees. Can you nod your head, nod your head, nod your head and stop? Nod your head, nod your head, nod your head and stop. Can you hop, can you hop, can you hop and stop? Can you hop, can you hop, can you hop and stop? Sing with me. Well, you walk, can you walk, can you walk, can you stop? And you walk, can you walk, can you walk and stop? Thanks for joining me today, guys.
Mrs. Hall, and I am a St. Tammany Parish public school teacher teaching third grade this year. I'm so glad that you can join me in this video. In this lesson, we are going to find, classify, and sort shapes that we find in our homes. But before we do that, let's go over our shapes. The first one we're going to go over is a circle. A circle has no sides, no corners. The next one is a square. A square has four sides and four corners. A triangle has three sides and three corners. And a rectangle is similar to a square, but two of its sides are longer than the other two. So I have a shape behind me. Can you guess what shape it is? That's right, this map behind me is a rectangle. So now, I'm gonna go around my house, I'm gonna collect some shapes that I see, and I'm gonna put it on the desk. I want you guys to do the same thing. I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that, and then we'll report back. So here are the items that I collected around my house. Let's classify each shape. Here we have a, that's right, you guessed it, a rectangle. This one is a, yep, a circle. This sticky note, what shape do you guys think this is? Correct, it is a square. Here, I have a box of tissues. Yep, that is a rectangle. Here, I have some tape. What shape do you guys think this is? Yep, it is a circle. Now this one was kind of tough, but I'm hoping that you guys can see that this is a triangle. Finding triangles in my house was not easy, so here I cut one. <laughs> and this, what do you guys think this is? Yep, it's a square. So now we're gonna sort them. This we said was a rectangle. What else did we say was a rectangle? Yep, the box of tissues. We said this was a circle. What else did we say was a circle? That's right, the tape. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Our sticky note here is what? A square, which we also said this was also a square. And these two are triangles. Notice that they're all different sizes. So even though these two are both different sizes, they're both rectangles. These two look very different, but they're both triangles. Although this, the tape is a lot smaller than this plate, they're both circles. And these are both different colors and sizes, but they're both squares. I hope that you enjoyed this video. You guys did an awesome job. Don't forget that you can watch videos just like this daily on STPPS TV or on our website, stpsb.org. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. A-Bear. I'm in my backyard practicing personal space. I thought of a game. What we can do, you take all the exercises that we've been doing the whole year, write them on a piece of paper, put them in the jar, okay? Shake them up, okay? Reach in and take. Okay. Take one out, and read it, and it says, Shoulder touch push ups. So let's say we're going to do 10. Okay? Remember, shoulder touch push ups. Don't do a camel back. Don't do a swoopy back. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me pick another exercise. Okay? You might have to get a bigger container. Another exercise is bottom balance. Okay. Bottom balance, remember? Feet on the floor. 
there is a bug here not practicing personal space. Back bug! Feet on the floor, hands in the air, feet off the floor. Bounce for 10 seconds. Or if that's too easy, you can do your in and outs. Or you can do the bicycling. Very good. Let's get another exercise. This one is the spider dance. One of my favorites. Spider dance, spider dance. Raise your knees above your pants. Raise them high, not too low. Raise them fast, not too slow. Watch out. This is the spider dance. Hey! Stop all that noise! Sorry, neighbor! Everybody knows that Mr. Abra doesn't sing very well. I just sing loud. Sorry again, neighbor! I'm glad you and I are practicing personal space. So, what you can do with these exercises also is take one jar full of exercises, another jar, maybe with a number. When you pull out the number, it tells you how many to do. Or you can add to a number. So you're doing 20, pull out a number, 5, 20 plus 5, be 25. Or third graders, you can multiply. Open up, pull out, say, hey, I got I'm doing 10 exercises, pull out 4, 4 times 10, 40. Oh my goodness, you might have to do 40 mountain climbers. The other day someone said, Mr. Abraham, are you growing a beard? I said, no, it's growing by itself. <laughs> stay safe, stay healthy, hope to see y'all soon. My name is Alita Spears. I'm a mental health provider with St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. I thought it would be helpful today if we practiced a breathing strategy to help us when we may be feeling anxious. And so um, our breathing strategy today uses a visual of a birthday cake with candles. I'm sure we've all seen a birthday cake with candles. And what we're going to do with this breathing strategy is smell the cake and then blow out the candles. So when we smell the cake, we're going to breathe in through our nose and then out through our mouth. And we do that three times. Any breathing strategy, we typically do about three times. So um, let's smell the cake and blow out the candles. Smell the cake and blow out the candles. I hope you found that helpful and another tool that you can use as a resource for you. Have a great afternoon.
Good morning, everybody. I hope you enjoyed drawing a cake with me yesterday. I know your artwork turned out beautiful. And if you still want a little bit more practice today, we're gonna take what we learned in the video yesterday um, from the drawing of the cake inspired by Wayne Tebow. We're gonna take that knowledge and we're going to add it to a little bit more drawing knowledge today. We're gonna challenge ourselves with a slice of cake or pie, similar to this Wayne Tebow painting. I have my example here. Maybe even challenge ourselves with multiple cakes on a paper. I have my example here. It's not colored. And then even better, challenging ourselves with a layered cake, different tiers on top of each other in a realistic way. So those are some of my ideas today. I'm gonna to show you how to draw them, show you a, a few uh, coloring skills, and then I'm going to set you free and let you make your own unique creations. Today, we are gonna use pastel. If you do not have pastel, that is okay. Just like yesterday, you can use crayon for this project on white paper, okay? Just like pastel, you can still add value, shadows, and highlights with crayon. So if you don't have pastels, it is okay. All right, we are going to not need a pencil today. We're gonna to draw in white because you are gonna be brave and draw in white. White pastel is very easy to cover up on black paper. The reason why I'm choosing black is to um, show a lot of contrast on our drawing. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to draw a slice of cake, okay? So imagine you drew a beautiful cake yesterday with a slice cut out of it. Where's the other slice? Let's draw it. Okay, so let's start in the middle. We want our slice to be nice and big. The bigger it is, the easier it will be to color and make it more detailed, okay? so. We're gonna draw a letter V, but it's gonna be slanted. It's gonna be diagonal sideways. So I'm gonna start by putting my pastel in the middle, okay? And then I'm gonna scoot over a little bit and down, make a little dot. So if this is the middle of my paper, it's over and down a little bit, okay? From there, I'm gonna draw a sideways V. This is so it looks like the cake slice is going into the background. Now, cake is round. Most cakes are round. The cake we drew is round. So I'm going to draw a curve for the edge of the cake. A line that goes down, but not all the way, so we can save room for the plate. And another line that goes down, but not all the way. These two lines should be similar in length. From there, I'm going to draw a diagonal line here to make the bottom of the cake. Look at that. So easy, right? Now I'm gonna draw an oval for the plate. Remember, you don't want the oval going on top of the cake. Maybe you want some rows. That's your icing. Maybe you want to show some piped icing here. Yum. Sprinkle details, candle details, all that can come later. So now I'm gonna draw my table. My table's a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna draw another line. Just like I said earlier, pastel is very easy to cover up, so I can, that'll be covered up when we when we draw, when we, when we color it in. And there's my table. Yay, how easy was that, right? So how do you turn this into, oops, sorry, hit the camera. How do you turn this into something like this? It's actually very easy. If you just remember when coloring with pastels, you have to press hard and overlapping different colors together makes it more unique, okay? White is also your friend when you're using pastels. I'm using black paper because it really shows up, it really um, has a nice pop to it. So I'm not gonna color everything with you today. I'm gonna show you how to color the plate and using shadows and highlights. And I'm gonna show you how to blend some colors for the table. And then while I'm coloring, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more information. So I'm going to do a blue. Plate. So I'm going to get a regular blue, light blue, and white. Now, if you don't have pastels, do your own thing with crayon. Maybe you want to paint it. That is totally fine. Go for it. All right, so I'm going to start with my blue. It's my base color. I'm pressing hard. Now, while I'm coloring this and while you're coloring this, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about 
myself and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. My name's Rachel Walker. I'm Miss Walker at Lee Road School in Covington, Louisiana. I'm in the art teacher there. I teach grades K through eight. And I started to make a video yesterday because I was missing my art classes. I was thinking that they were probably missing the opportunity to be a little bit creative and let loose as well, especially since we're all kind of stuck in our homes. So my thought was, let me make some short, quick videos of projects I could actually do with them in, in, in my classroom, but instead of my classroom, in their home. With them hearing my voice, um, maybe they would feel comfort, some sense of normalcy. They're familiar with how I talk, how I give directions, um, you know, how I teach. So I was just thinking that we all need a little bit of normalcy in this um, unique situation we're all in. So that is why I'm making these videos. Um, and not only for my students, anybody in the community that wants to watch these, go for it. Now, I'm not a professional. There are so many <clears throat> talented artists on YouTube that have plenty of resources that are more in-depth than what I'm doing. I'm just doing some quick things that my students can follow along with um, and hear, hear a voice that they hear um, on a regular basis. Now, I took a darker blue. And what am I adding? I'm adding a shadow. I'm thinking about this cake called casting a shadow onto the plate. All right, I think I'm good. Now I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna add some highlight. And that's maybe where the light in the room is shining bright on the plate. The word I tell my kids a lot is blending. When you overlap pastels, they blend together really nicely. Also, I have my two-year-old in the room with me, so if you hear anything wild, we're figuring it out. We are gonna figure out how to make these videos for everybody together. Okay, so what you think? Looking good, right? I didn't press hard enough right here. I'm gonna go back and press hard enough. You know you pressed hard when all you can't when you can barely see the black. All right, that's my blended uh, plate. Maybe you want to bring that that um, shadow a little deeper. Black, navy blue. Depends on what kind of set of pastels you have. I don't know for sure, but I bet they have these at Walmart, and you can do um, curbside pickup to get these for your house without having to go inside of the store. All right, so love it. I made the shadow a little deeper with black. All right, so let's do the table and then I'm gonna move on to another drawing um, example so you can uh, use your own creativity. Don't forget details like sprinkles, icing colors, I even added a window in the background. The more you practice, maybe you have a second cake. Why is this cake bigger than this cake? The second cake is in the background, it's further away from you. So that's why that one's smaller. So challenging yourself with those kind of things. All right, so blended table. Maybe you don't wanna do a striped tablecloth like yesterday or polka dots. Maybe you wanna practice your blending and overlapping skills. So let's do purple, pink. I mean purple, red, and pink. There is my pink. Here it is. And then our trusty white because white is your friend. All right, so I'm gonna start. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. But I'm going to do darker in the background because it's further away. Pressing hard. I'm holding my paper. So I have purple. And then I'm going to overlap with red. Stop. Take the pink. Overlap with pink. That go all the way to, almost all the way to the bottom. And then... I got a little blue in there from there, from the plate, but that is okay. Let's say your color is looking a little dark, like purples and blues tend to do on black paper. So easy, you just go back, add some white maybe. You can even add some pink on top. And it's gonna brighten all those colors up. Okay, so that's a nice blended little table. Okay, so I'm gonna move on, have fun with that. I'm going to move on to the layered cake. Um, it is so simple if you just follow along. Okay, 
So this is the piece of black paper that I have, whereas your paper's vertical. It's chal. The other example we did was horizontal side to side. All right, so now I'm going to take my white. To peel it a little bit. I'm gonna start at the very top, okay? Top, scoot down a little bit. That's where you want the, your smallest cake to be. I'm slanting my paper a little bit because it's easier for me to draw that way. So that's the smallest oval. Down, down. Curve to connect. I'm gonna start another oval halfway down the length, the height of this uh, line. Oval around, stop when you run into the cake. Line down, down. Curve to connect. Another oval going halfway down this line. Oval around, stop when you run into the cake. Line down, down. Curve to connect. Oh no, my line's wobbly. That's totally fine. Like I said, pastels are easy to cover up. So I made it, I fixed it. Okay, I'm not sure if I have enough room for another layer. So I'm going to draw my plate. It's gonna go off the page because that's how my cake ended up being, more slanted and that is totally fine. All right, let's say you wanna add some icing. I'm just gonna do some scalloped shapes for me to color in, different color later. Beautiful. Background. <clears throat> how easy was that? So quick, okay? Now how do you turn that into this, okay? I've got pinks, reds, whites, okay? I started with more pinks at the top of the cake and used more red as I went down. I colored in the icing white and went back and really pressed hard. After I put the first coat of white down, I really went back and pressed hard to make that white pop. I went for a more realistic table here, okay? I have a wooden table and maybe a white wall background, okay? So I'm gonna show you a little bit of blending on a one cake layer and how to do the table that I'm gonna set you free. Red, pink, white. Let's do this middle one. Medium amount of pink. Color on top of the white lines. You want to cover them up. Remember, you can be doing this with crayon and white paper with me. So that's a good amount of pink. I'm ready for the red. Overlap with the red. Now, maybe I'm looking at it, I'm thinking there's just too much red on this. Easy fix, just don't color it all in with red. Take the pink, color on top of the pink, I mean color on top of the red. And let it go, blend in. How nice is that? All right, I'm gonna do the same with red at the bottom. You wanna blend it in with the pink and cover up that white, don't forget. A little bit of red underneath, a little bit of red underneath the um, icing. Yes, I'm right here. Tell me what you need. All right. How easy is that? Looking good, huh? All right, let's do a little white in my icing. looking a little bit messy and that is okay. I'm gonna go back with a little bit of pink and blend it in a little bit. 
I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna really, really press hard to get those scallops going. Beautiful, right? So then I just continue that all the way down with more red up down here and more pink up here to show value. All right, the table is so easy. You can start with white, you can start with brown, it's whatever you wanna do, I'm gonna do diagonal lines. Okay, I'm gonna start with this corner, I'm gonna do a diagonal here. And I'm going to move my hand across, pretending like I'm drawing, but I'm not, to continue the line. Diagonal, pretend like I'm drawing across, boom. Diagonal, great. That was easy. Got it. Or maybe for less of a challenge, maybe you just want to do wooden... Um, Panel, pieces of wood going uh, vertical, just up and down or horizontal straight across. All right, to get the wood effect, I'm just gonna add white little lines everywhere. Take black, do the same thing. just going to color right on top. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about with a small section. Also, I have a dog in here drinking water. Sorry about the sound effects. Real life people. I am not a professional video maker. Okay. So some of those lines got covered up and that is what we want. We want a variety of value. So I'm gonna go back, take my white. Okay, got some more black. Really show those corner line, the um, lines in between the different pieces of wood. Maybe you want to do more shadows in the back because it's farther away. Or just lightly cover some color some black. Alright, what you think? Pretty easy, huh? Background's up to you. Okay? Now for the finale, okay? Let's turn, let's take all of our knowledge and combine it into one piece of art. Okay? So this is what I have, and this is what I'm gonna quickly show you. So if you're still coloring, working on your other pieces of work. Um, just press pause. Hey, okay. <laughs> gonna press pause and then come back to this if you want to do a, the grand finale combination of all these sweet treats. All right, I'm gonna take a white. I'm gonna start with my bigger cake and I'm gonna do the bigger cake over here. Now, if you would like to do your paper vertical and do your own thing with combining and put everything in its own spot, do that. I'm gonna do it horizontal. So I think I'll have more room. Okay, I'm gonna start at the top. Oval. Line down, down. Cake's a little bit lopsided, that is okay. Curve. Oval. Stop. Line down, line down. Curve. Now, if I'm going too fast, which I probably am, just hit pause. I'm going fast for the sake of the video not being extremely long. Oval. Line down. Curve. Now my cake is gone off the page. Is that okay? Absolutely. I think it's more interesting. All right. My a little bit crazy looking. Line down. Curve. Okay. I'm going to do a plate that goes off the page. What about a slice cut out of this cake? Absolutely. We're going to do it a little bit different than we did yesterday. We're going to do a sideways. Um, we're gonna do a slanted letter V right here, okay? You see how it's slanted? Down, down. Then I'm gonna make a diagonal right here that is the same angle as this guy right here. Now, when you're coloring inside your cake, you're gonna cover this up and you're gonna cover this line up and they will go away when you color and so it looks like you have the slice, slice cut out of it. Now, maybe this slice is gonna go right here, okay? So, I'm gonna draw my slice. 
I'm gonna draw it the opposite way we did from earlier. I'm gonna draw, instead of the V going this way, I'm gonna draw the V point going this way. So I'm just gonna scoot over from my cake, draw a little dot to help me. V, like that. Curve. This slice from there. Down. Down, this one's gonna go further. Down, this one's gonna go shorter than this guy. Connect with this curve. Boom, this is a little mess up. I'll cover that up later. My icing is here. My icing is here. Can you tell? How great is that? This guy's a little wider than this face, but that is totally fine because it still looks amazing. I'm gonna do my plate around the side and move on to another dessert. Now I'm gonna do just a regular cake, like the one we did yesterday. I'm gonna do it in, this is the foreground and the front, I'm doing the middle ground. Oval, line down, line down, curve, you know what to do. Cake, plate, done. So quick, pause it if I went too fast. All right, last step. What if you want one more cake back here? I'm gonna do it smaller than the rest because it's further away. I'm gonna do a two-layer two cake. Little oval, line down, line down, curve. Bigger oval, line down, line down, curve. Plate around it, oval, stop. Last thing I'm gonna do is the table. What'd you think? Pretty great, right? What else could you add? Maybe forks, maybe spoons, maybe napkins, maybe confetti, maybe a tablecloth, maybe candles. My niece, Audrey, um, she added a number seven candle to the top of her cake yesterday. I thought that was really creative. Maybe you're doing flowers as icing around the edges. The possibilities are truly endless. You guys are all awesome. Make the best of your time at home. And I will be back with some more fun things soon. Have a great day.